sin, listen to me carefully. If you do something and you think it's okay, if you do something and you think it's okay and you continue to do it, your heart gets hardened. All right, sin has that tendency. And listen to me, Christians, there are many people who go to church who say they are Christians, but they commit the same sin over and over and over and over again. And just because they haven't been killed by God, just because they continue to be able to go to church, just because pastor still offers them communion, just because it looks like they are a Christian, they have hardened their heart against sin. So this message is for Christians. Keep in mind, James was like the pastor for all the original church. So he's giving us so much things we can learn about the, for Christians, okay? How should a Christian on a daily basis receive God's word? All right, very important. How should we receive God's word? Because guess what? Every day I am surrounded by temptations. Every day I'm surrounded by problems. Every day I'm surrounded by maybe anger, irritation, maybe wanting to lie, maybe wanting to do something wrong. How should, when I sit in front of the Bible, then what should I do for God to help me? And with that, we turn to James chapter 1. Verse 21, please. James chapter 1, verse 21. Let's learn what God wants to teach us about this. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. Amen. So the Bible is saying, wherefore, Lay apart all filthiness, filth, all right, dirty stuff, superfluity of naughtiness, basically wickedness. You're so, listen, naughty in the Bible, you know, we uh, Malayali parents or any parents, they're like, oh, how cute, you're so naughty. To little children, we like to say, oh, how cute, you're so naughty. The same naughty child will think naughtiness is an amazing thing, right? They'll think it's good to be naughty because the people are encouraging him. And what happens in a few years? Will anyone appreciate the naughtiness? <laughs> Listen, being naughty is not a good thing. The Bible associates naughtiness with wickedness, with wrong, with sin. Don't say I am joking and do something bad and someone's crying. See, someone say, can say, oh, he was just being naughty, you know, just be kind to him. It's okay. Except the person who he tried to trick, he or she tried to play a prank on is now crying. He's in tears. You see, God doesn't think that is a great thing to do. Do you want God to trick you and make you cry? No, I love how Aaron, when you prayed, Aaron, you said, God, you are so gentle with us. God, you don't get angry. You're just so nice to us, so gentle with us. Should God's people then be naughty to people and make them hurt? No, do unto others what you would have them do unto you. So the Bible is saying, lay aside, remove from your life all things filthy things. Listen, he's not talking to unbelievers. I want you to know this. James, the deacon of the church, the pastor of all Christian church, not Peter. It was James who was the half brother of Jesus. He's saying, listen, remove all filthy, dirty things from your life. What are you watching? What are you listening what are you soaking in day in and day out? What are you reading? Who are you watching on TikTok or Snapchat or whatever you're doing? What is your influence in your life? Who are you really following? Listen to me carefully, dear child. If you are following a person who is filthy, before you know it, you will become filthy. If you follow someone who is naughty and has the wrong intentions and follows wrong intention, before you know it, you will follow the very footsteps of that person. 
Have you noticed someone who says, hey, I'm a fan of, I'm making this up completely, I'm a fan of LeBron James. Next thing you know, if they're a crazy fan, they will dress up literally like him. <laughs> they will try to even get the tattoos. They'll try to have that same swagger. You know, they'll try to mimic the person, dude, in, in and out. Without your knowing. And the thing with following people who have a filthy lifestyle is next thing you know, you will have that. And the Bible is saying, James is saying, dear children, church children, remove filthy behavior from you. Remove the overflow of naughtiness, wickedness from you. Listen, there's so much coming out of you that's so dirty. Just move it. And listen to me carefully. This next step is very important. Receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. Receive. How should we receive? What does it say? How should we receive? Receive with meekness. Very good, Basil. And, and I'm going to explain this because you probably are like, what our language is this, right? Receive with meekness. The implanted word, the word that is sown in your heart, implanted, planted inside you, planted seed put inside you. I should receive this word of God that is planted in you right now as I'm preaching. Dear children, listen to me. Right now as I'm preaching, I'm planting a seed. I'm planting a seed. What seed? It's the word of God. We are planting the seed of James chapter 1 verse 21. The seed is being planted in your heart. As this one hour we're going to spend together, the seed is going to go into your heart. Now, here's the power of this word of God. What is it going to do once it's planted in you? It is going to save your soul. The most important part of you is your soul. The only thing that can save my soul is what? According to the scripture, tell me what is the only thing that can save my soul? So according to this scripture, James 1.21, what is the one thing that can save my soul? Anyone? Receive meekness? No. What can save the soul? The Holy Spirit? No. According to the scripture, what can save the soul? The word. The word of God. It tells you should receive it this certain way, but what can save it is the implanted word which is able to save your soul. It is the implanted word, the word that is sown in us. Today's scripture, guys, all of you who are, who are listening to me, when you read the word of God, when you listen to the word of God, you are getting something that can save your soul. Okay, so let's, um, let, let's try to dwell deep into it. I thought it was a little more deeper. So that's why we have one verse today and we're going to study just this one verse. So, Let's learn a little more about sin, right? You all know sin, right? Sin is disobedience to God. I like this picture that you're seeing. You see I in italics? Yeah, I is slanted in there and it has a brighter red. Yes, all of sin is because we think of ourselves bigger and greater and our needs are above everything else. When you put yourself as the most important person on this planet that needs to be satisfied, that everyone needs to cater to, that everyone is going around and better take care of, that's a problem. That is why Jesus says, he who has to follow me must deny himself, take up the cross and follow me. The number one thing about getting following Jesus is stop thinking about yourself. Deny yourself. Say no to your needs. Say no to you. Oh, but I have to do this now. I have to buy that shoes. I have to. I, I, I. 
I need to do this. I have to please this. My body needs that pleasure right now. I have to give in. I. And that's sin. And the, when you try to please yourself, with temptations will come and it's trying to cater to your eye. Temptations, dear children, are nothing more than Satan telling you, let me satisfy your eye inside you. What does your eye want? And the temptations are different for different people. Temptations are unique. And if you have the eye that is greater than the J for Jesus inside you, you will fall. You will fall. It doesn't matter I go to church. It doesn't matter I'm baptized. It doesn't matter I am go taking communion. It doesn't matter. I must fall down and be replaced by J, Jesus. When Jesus is greater in your life, sin has no stronghold. He who comes to me, that's why Jesus said, you must deny yourself. Say no, Aaron, no. Say Basil, no. Meryl, no. Gabriel, no. Say no, no, no. Jebby, no. And follow Jesus. We can't follow Jesus as long as you cater to you. Does that make sense? So sin, first thing is say no to you. Now, number two, once we get into sin, right? And the Bible's telling, there is, what did we say? The one thing that can save souls? What did we say two slides ago? What did we say? What was the one thing that can save souls? Word of God. Word of God. So let's look more about the word of God. Hebrews chapter four, verse 12. How can this word of God save my soul? I, every day I have temptations. Every day I face challenges. Every day I have all these attractions that God may not want me to. God is not getting anything by that, but I like to please I. It's pleasing me. How can I get rid of it? And Bible says, word of God can help you. Bible saying this Bible we are reading, this words we are reading, dear children, it can actually help you when you go through difficulty, when you go through that temptation, word of God can help you. How does it help? Read that, please. Hebrews 4, verse 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing ascender of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Amen. You see, dear children, when a person sins, People don't even know they're sinning. <laughs> Did you know that? When you're pleasing yourself and walking in life in this world, everything seems okay. I'm not doing anything wrong. I mean, what's wrong? All my friends watch this. I didn't do anything wrong. It's the PG-13. Hello. I mean, oh, I have thoughts about that. I mean, but everyone does. It's not bad. You see. When you don't read the word of God, there's nothing that will ever, ever convict you. And there are majority of Christians who go to church today who has not opened the Bible until when pastor says, open your Bible. Or sometimes even then they won't bring the Bible. They will look at the screen if your church has one of those nice screens that show the scripture. Come home. There's no Bible reading, 24 hours, Monday, Tuesday, another 24 hours. Oh, come Sunday. Oh, where's the Bible? Okay, let me take the Bible. Still closed. Open when pastor says, hey, that's, a, that's a good, that, that, that's someone who at least did that. Moni, when was the last time you opened the Bible uh, with the meeting? with the youth uh, prayer conference, this uh, prayer line. And then on Sunday, done. Are you reading the word of God daily? Because guess what? Your temptations are coming daily. You, I in me is alive in you daily. And if I don't read the word of God daily, I will be like a hardened Christian saying, everything's okay, man. Life's good. I'm good. 
I didn't sin. But when the word of God goes in your heart and he convicts you, you see, he separates the spirit from the soul. Whoa! What can separate your spirit from your soul? Those two are parts of you. Well, the word of God can. He will literally lay it apart and say, this was wrong. He will discern the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Meaning, you may be saying, well, everyone does it. I mean, I just watched a PG-13 movie and God's word will say, you are having bad thoughts from that scene in PG-13. That is wrong. You shouldn't think those thoughts. Your intentions of your heart, when you are justifying yourself saying, that's okay. God's word saying, why do you say it's okay? Are you okay with disobeying me? Are you okay with falling for sin? Are you crucifying me again? Don't you know how great a price I paid? Even in the name of ministry, when you do things, listen to me carefully. The spirit of God and the word of God will go in like a double-edged sword. And it will pierce through and it'll say, your intentions actually are not to bring people to God, this person to God. Your intentions are to glorify yourself. Your intentions are to get money. Your intentions is to get a friendship. Your intent is not clean. Your intention is not holy. But to get to that place, I need the word of God. I need to go to the sword. I need to go to the sword that alone can cut away things that should be cut away. Remove things that should be removed and help me. So do you realize God's word is now powerful? Yes. So first we said the only thing that can save our soul is the word of God. Now you're seeing how the word of God is the only thing that can save your soul because it will chop off anything that is dirty and ugly and not right in your life. If your mommy got a vegetable from the shop or you picked it from your garden, maybe a carrot uh, or a banana, and there is some dirt in it, maybe there's a worm that's dug a hole in it. You see a hole and you're like, ah, there's an insect there. There's a bug inside. What does your mommy do with the knife? Does she say, oh, good for the curry. I'll feed my son uh, this banana with the worm. <laughs> no, what do they do with the knife? Chop, chop, chop. Get out, worm. My kid is not, not eating the worm. He's eating the good fruit. That is what God does. The word of God comes in. It chops off things that shouldn't be there. It helps you get clean so that you can even say, I'm sorry. As long as you don't know you're doing wrong, will you ever say sorry? No. If you don't think you did wrong, will you say sorry? Why would you say sorry if you didn't do wrong? <laughs> right? And God does not compare you with the rest of this world. So you should stop comparing yourself with the rest of this world. You and I should compare ourselves with, with who? Who can give me the answer? Who should you compare yourself with? With the pastor, with the pastor's son, with the missionaries in the past, with Bible heroes? Who should you compare yourself with? What is the standard you should do, follow? Everyone in Sunday school is doing that. <laughs> is that a good answer? <laughs> Who should you compare yourself with? Anyone? Jesus. Very good, Basil. The only person you should compare yourself with is Jesus. That is why Jesus came as 100 percentage man. He led a life. An example for us to follow. The only role model you can compare is Jesus. You know why? That's the only role model God is seeing you follow. 
You cannot make an excuse saying he did, she did. Jesus, I, I thought you are following my son, Jesus, who died for you. Why are you following Tom, Dick, and Harry? We have to follow Jesus. Amen. Now, here's the why James is talking about this. Very important. Why is James talking about this? Because sin, because sin is powerful and sin stops people from receiving God's word. How? How does sin stop people? We talked about hardening. Think of this. So in, here it says, a prideful heart exalts self above all else. When you have sin and Satan, the father of sin, and yeah, that's why God hates pride. God hates pride, hates. <laughs> the Bible says God resists the proud. Whoa, can you imagine God resisting anything? The proud. You know why when you are proud, suddenly you are about everything, including God's word, God and God's word. If the Bible said, here's the, here's the example. Let's say someone's committing adultery. Okay. You know what adultery is, right? Or, okay, let's use something else. Let's say someone is stealing. Okay. Someone's stealing. The Bible says, do not steal. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So the Bible, God doesn't expect you. Okay, our Bible says do not lie. How's that? <laughs> Bible says do not lie. <laughs> we uh, Christians often lie. Even though the Bible says in another place, actually no one who lies will go to heaven. <laughs> you know, yet Christians lie. So here's the thing. You lie and then the sin in your life and you're like, well, I mean, I'm just being cool. I don't have to tell this to Papa and Mommy. I don't have to tell this truth to anyone. Do you think when they read the scripture that says a prideful, like a liar will not go to heaven, what are they taking? Will they really take that word of God in? Will they receive it? No, I see Aaron show no, no. Why? That's the problem with pride. Listen to me carefully. Sin goes hand in hand with something called pride. Because it makes you like this hardened. And guess what will happen? The immediately, God's word does not make sense. You're like, eh. You'll just shrug your shoulders. It's like when mommy says, Monet, don't do this. And you're like, of course, mommy is going to say that. You'll just, it's okay, mom. I'll be okay. <laughs> and you just walk off. Because you're like, she says that all the time. Don't take her seriously. But you see, we sometimes do that even with God. We sometimes say, think, oh, God's just saying something. I don't have to really, I mean, I don't have to really listen now, do I? How many people, when they hear that scripture that says, liars do not go to heaven, but they literally lied that morning, are going to be in tears, crying in front of God, repenting and seeing the cross and Jesus' blood wash, washing over this. And how many people? will do that. You know why they don't do that? Because sin stops them from receiving God's word. And that is why James has a solution. Are you guys ready to hear what James is trying to teach us today? He's saying, I have a solution for you. When that happens and you know, like you don't want to receive the word of God, here is how you should receive God's word. You should receive God's word with Meekness, with meekness. And this is what Basil said before. The only way to receive God's word, dear children, is with meekness. What is meekness? Humility. It is that temper of spirit in which we accept God's dealings with us as good. And you don't dispute, you don't resist. So here now, I I'm the sinner. I lied this morning. Now I read the scripture. It says, liars do not go to heaven. If I, when I read it, I come with meekness, where I accept God dealing with me through that scripture saying, Jebby, if you lie, you're not going to heaven. Jebby, liars do not go to heaven. What did you do? 
And if I receive God's correction, like God is talking to me through that scripture, I am not disputing it. I'm not resisting it. How do you think now I will receive the word of God? Do you think at that point I will be convicted? What do you guys think? If I receive the word of God with conviction, if I receive it with meekness, like God, you're telling me I can't live an unholy life. I can't have unholy life or I won't go to heaven. I can't lie. I won't go to heaven. You see, God speaks the truth and sometimes he's very strict with us. Are we ready to receive it? Are you ready to receive it? How do you think your answer will be? If you receive that same scripture with meekness, how do you think it will be, Aaron? The same scripture that said, you know, liars will not go to heaven, but you're receiving it with meekness, meaning you're receiving it like God is dealing with me. So that's a word you're dealing with me as for my good. And that's why I will not dispute it. I will not resist it. Do you think the outcome will be good? Yes. Do you see that? Do you guys see that? Or is this hard? Talk to me. I understand it. You understood it? How about you, Gabriel, Basil? Again, I, the Bible's trying to say something and very significant. He's trying to say, you cannot, the, yes, there is power in God's word. No question about it. Listen, God's word is ready today, right now to clean you up, to help you go to heaven, to take your soul to heaven. But as long as I allow, I don't receive God's word, that go word, that should help me. If I'm resisting it, if I'm proud, like, yeah. Oh, God, that's not, that's something. It's not for me. Oh, this scripture doesn't apply to me. If you only take the scriptures that you, pleases you, <laughs> you're not going to go get the power that will help you or break, save your soul. You'll always be picking scriptures that you like to hear. If God tells you something through God's word that you hated, you're like, why are you telling me this? It's making me sad. You're telling me I need to live a better life. You're telling me I did wrong. We should receive it with humility. We should receive it with obedience and thankfulness and saying, God, you know best. You're trying to help me. You're trying to help me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please help me. Please help me out of this addiction. Please help me out of this relationship. Please help me out of not watching things that I shouldn't watch. You see, the entire world can watch movies on Amazon and Netflix and things like that. But if after watching even clean shows, your heart is troubled and you are find yourself led closer to sin, just delete it. Don't watch it. Take it off your phone. Take it off. You don't need it. If God tells you don't do it, obey him. Obey him. Obey him. And the, that is how God can purify us. Amen. Matthew chapter 11, verse 29, please. And this is important because Jesus himself said, I am meek. Jesus says, you learn from me. I am meek. This is a quality of Jesus. He never, he did everything in meekness, in humility. And meekness doesn't mean being weak and being a failure. Meek means, God, you know best and I am ready to listen to you. Whatever you say, I'm ready to be humble. Matthew eleven twenty nine, 29, please. Become my servants and learn from me. I am gentle and free of pride. You will find rest for your souls. 
Ah, again, the word gentle in your version. Very good. We are talking about God's gentleness. Right. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. This Jesus says when people are very like, come to me all who are heavy laden. So if you need rest, if you're so overworked, come to me and learn from me. You, you can't be overworked unless you learn to be humble. When you're humble, listen, it's okay. Life is easy when you are humble. When you are humble, life is easy. Amen. So Jesus is also had that nature. He's telling us when we read the word of God, we need that nature. Amen. Receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your soul. So how should we receive God's word? With? Meekness. With meekness. And what does meekness mean? What does meekness mean? To accept and believe what God says. Yes, with a humble heart, not to fight it, not to resist it. Don't dispute it, meaning don't say like, but Jesus, you don't mean that. <laughs> don't try to, you know, say, Jesus, can you change your mind about that? <laughs> no disputing. If you said so, okay, God. That is how we should receive the word of God. Like whatever you say. Today, when you listen to the word of God, after the prayer line, when you read the word of God, you're one-to-one -one with God. God, you're trying to tell me something. Whatever it is, I'm ready to listen. Whatever it is, I'm ready to obey. Whatever it is, here I am. Ready to listen to you, serve you. Amen? Don't fight God. Are you guys okay with that? Can you not fight God when you read the word of God? Yes? Even if he says something that is tough to listen, will you listen? Yes? When the word of God corrects, will you listen? Yes. Don't fight with God. When God tells something, anything, when you're reading, when you open the Bible, you should say, God, talk to me today. Then when, you, when God is talking to you through that scripture, say, God, you're trying to teach me something. I will listen, I will learn, and I will change my behavior. Amen? Scripture is for changing us. Remember, it's trying to save us to heaven. Amen? Does that scripture, does the scripture now make sense? This one? The most sin, God's word will help you move sin, but you need to receive it with humility. You need to receive it with meekness. All right, let's pray. Every eye closed. Dear Lord Jesus, help us, Father Lord, to receive the word of God with humility, with meekness, without resisting it, Father Lord. Whatever you tell us, Lord, help us to obey, change us, wash us, purify us. Help us, Lord. Heal our soul, Father, Lord. Your word, Lord, is powerful, Lord. It's sharper than a double-edged sword, Father God. Cut off things that need to be cut off, Lord, from our life, Lord, and bring our thoughts, our, uh, our feelings, everything, Lord, in clarity, Father God. I pray tonight you will wash over every sin in our life, Father God. Forgive us, forgive us, forgive us, for we have sinned. Against thee and only you have we sinned, Lord, and done this iniquity in your eyes, Lord. Wash us, Father God. Take hold of our feelings. Take hold of our thoughts. Whatever we think, feel, say, do, may it all be pleasing to you, Father God. Let every word that comes out of our mouth be acceptable to you. Let every thought that we think be acceptable to you, Father God. We pray, Lord, that I, in our life, the need to please ourselves, Lord, would die, would go away from us, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Today, we give ourselves once again to you. We surrender ourselves to you. Have your way, Jesus. Keep us faithful and true, Abba, Father. I thank you. I praise you. I bless you. In Jesus' mighty and matchless name, amen. 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 So always receive God's word with meekness, with humility. Amen.
and God will bless you. Any prayer request or testimony tonight? Anyone wants to share well, how good God has been to you? Nothing. OMG. <laughs> okay. Any prayer request? Double OMG. <laughs> so either all your prayers are really being answered by God, which is not bad. I Okay, I see, Basil. <laughs> um, I'm going to school uh, next week. and School starting? Yes. Oh, wow. Okay. And I hope I still stay faithful and good. Yes. Amen. Anyone else? School is starting next week? No, right. In the East Coast, it starts close to September. And that's true. Um, in other parts of the States, it starts in August, uh, early August. Okay. So guys, let's all pray for Basil. And I love his prayer request. He is asking not just for blessings for doing well in school. I hope you heard his prayer request. He said, and so I can be faithful. He wants to be faithful to God. And this should be everyone's prayer request. Money, God bless you for that. Continue to seek, desire that you would be faithful to God. Amen. Guys, let's all pray. Let's all hold Basil right now. Um, in prayer. Amen. God answers corporate prayer. So I want all of us to pray with a sincere heart for Basil. Dear Lord Jesus, Father God, we thank you, Lord, for your beloved son, Basil, Lord. I thank you for the desire of his heart, Lord, to be faithful to you this coming year, Lord. Father Lord, you have helped him, blessed him, Lord. He's going to the next year, Father Lord. Go before him, Lord, and make the crooked path straight. I pray your blessings will be on him, Lord. Surround him, Lord. Let your angels be around him. Help him to know that you are very near to him, Lord. Whatever his needs be, Lord, you will meet it, Lord. I pray for gr good grades. I pray, Father Lord, for your favor and your help, Father Lord, in every area, Lord. Lord Jesus, I pray your anointing will be upon this child. May he bring many people to the Jesus Christ, Lord, to your side, Father Lord, to your bleeding side, Father God. I pray he would be faithful and true, Lord. You are the God who is the author and finisher of our faith, Lord. You will be Bring to com completion, Lord, what you have started. Therefore, Lord, I pray you, you alone will answer this prayer, Lord, and he will be faithful, Lord, till the end of this next year and more, Lord. Make him faithful for the rest of his life, I pray, Lord. I thank you for answering his prayer, Lord. I bless him, Lord. The name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May he be baptized in the Spirit this coming year, I pray in Jesus' mighty name. I thank you for answering our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. God bless you, son. Amen. Uh, may the you be baptized in the Holy Spirit this coming year. Desire for the Holy Spirit baptism this coming year. Amen. There's no age limit for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's a power you need. And God will help you. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? Okay, if nothing else, uh, I want to uh, share a, uh, an event. So this coming Friday, Saturday, Sunday is the Sought Out Generation Retreat. So we do it uh, for um, anyone to come to Christ. So we usually hope people or children who go to church, any church, you don't have to be a part of Pentecostal, non-Pentecostal, anything, yeah, can bring people who are unsaved who have, do not know Jesus, uh, people who maybe need to know Jesus more, people who may need the Holy Spirit baptism, maybe need deliverance, and you will bring them to this retreat where they will uh, come to know Jesus and be saved. We keep the cost of the retreat very low. Like if people cannot pay for it, they can come for free. Those who can pay, the whole weekend is just $50 for um, all, everything. There's a lot of fun and games and stuff like that too, but it's um, 
And it's in beautiful, we rent a retreat center in the beautiful mountains uh, in New Hampshire. And there is transportation from New York. There is transportation from uh, where our church is because people volunteer and help bring people there and back. So it is for young people, 13 and over, and uh, anyone is welcome. Unbelievers are welcome. Uh, you don't need to be part of any church to come. You can be out of the street and you can come. And no one needs uh, to pay even a dime if they want to come because God, God's word is free. Amen. So we have mighty ministers coming, Pastor Felix Shivandre and Pastor Glenn Bradonsky, very powerful men of God. Um, Pastor Glenn was, I think, thrown in the street where the day he was born. Crazy, amazing men of God uh, who uh, can relate with all kinds of people. Amen. Uh, also, their ministers for this famous PCNAC and all of that, but they come to sort out gender retreat to uh, for something different. All right, this is where we bring the harvest to God. So I want to encourage you to pray over this weekend. I will be there in New Hampshire, um, so I won't be attending the next um, Friday's meeting. But hold us in prayer. If anyone wants to come, and if you want to bring anyone please come. You can come with how many ever people you want. You can come as a church. You can come outside church. You can all come together. It doesn't matter. It's an amazing, amazing place with the presence of God, where God does amazing things um, and prepares you for the next year. So hold us in prayer, hold the event in prayer. And um, if anyone is interested in coming, please come. Um, Amen. It's a uh, sortoutgen.org. You can even uh, search that and this retreat registration. I believe Sister Pushpa has posted the info on the teens meetings, uh, you know, um, WhatsApp. So um, if not, plan for next year. Plan for next year. We do it every year. This is our 14th retreat. Um, by God's grace, we have been able to keep the price at $50, um, even for those who can pay. Um, by God's grace, even after so many years, we, we have been able to do it. This is not sponsored by any church. It is just us, uh, me and my husband. And that is because we want everyone to know Christ. No church, no human can say it is our ministry. It's God's ministry. Everyone can come. Anyone can come. Like you can pull someone off the street and give them a whole weekend of rest. They can come. They can come and they'll feel loud. They will feel part of a family. Amen. So welcome um, and pray for the event. Like I said, we and, um, you know, plan this year or next year to come. And if you have questions, reach out to me. <laughs> all right. Um, all right, guys. God bless you guys. I'm going to end with a blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord lift up his glorious countenance on each and every one of you and give you great peace in Jesus mighty and matchless name. Amen. Be blessed. Be mighty in the Lord. Uh, do great things for God. Amen. And like I said, pray for a mighty harvest at this retreat. Um, every year, God does create amazing things. We've had people who have surrendered to the devil get saved. We've had uh, people who are our pastors get, get touched and uh, ushered into God's call. There's so much things happening. On uh, It's a double-edged word, right? Not only for the unsaved, it's for the saved people also to come into the full calling of God. So hold us in prayer. All right, guys. Why don't you guys unmute and say bye to each other?